I have to say, Mr. Fam, you certainly are a strange one. Even though you said, I feel so bad about it, it seems you were feeling happy about it. Nah. Ouch! I think I can guess why you were feeling happy. It must be because you messed Trucy up. I think you were happy because you messed the defendant up. <laughs> I'm right, aren't I? Y you gotta be kidding me! Why would I be happy if I messed Trucy up? I'm a big fan of hers! Because we saw you. I hate her. I loathe her. I can't stand that Trucy right. Just because she's a little good at magic, she thinks she's all that. So this is exactly what that sniveling brat deserves. We saw how you said you hated Trucy right. How you were glad she was in trouble and even how it was what she deserved. Ouch! It looks like I hit the bunny on the head, so to speak. Down to 50%. Apollo, the noise level dropped. Now if we could get it down to zero. Well, Mr. Fum, are you ready to confess how you really feel? What? What do you mean? I'm Bonnie, the sweet, cute little bunny. I'm a rookie magician working hard to be just like my idol, Trucy. That's the character I'm supposed to be! No, you're not. Keep that up, Mr. Fum, and you're gonna have a mental breakdown. Just let yourself be who you really are. Who I really am? The two sides of you are fighting each other and doing you psychic harm. I can hear them. Two distinct voices battling inside you. Shut your pie hole! You know nothing, know it all! I mean, you mustn't say things like that, or I might get flustered. Mr. Fom, how long do you insist on maintaining this wolf in sheep's clothing act? We can't end this therapy session until you get real with us. See the set the wild beast inside you free. Ouch! Laugh. You don't know a dang thing about me. You want to see who I really am? Fine. Take a good luck. <laughs> what in the world? Sheep's clothing? You've got it all wrong. It's a rabbit suit I've got on. And I'm not a wolf. I'm a blood-sucking vampire. A bat with fangs and wings. <laughs> yeah. I think we just opened Pandora's box. <laughs> I'm finally done with that goody two-shoes cottontail act. I feel free as a bat. <laughs> Defense, your therapy session has taken a turn for the worse from the looks of it. There's a perfectly good explanation for this, isn't there, Miss Sykes? Um, <laughs> May thinks I created a monster. We blew it! Hey, you, Lobster Boy! Who, me? You think I'm glad Juicy's in trouble? That I think she's getting her just desserts? Well, guess what? You're right! <laughs> um, does this mean you admit to wishing to defend and harm? Well, the bat's out of the bag now. <laughs> that mistake of mine was a work of art. Thanks to my goof, poor little Trucy had to do all that hard physical labor. When you say hard physical labor, what are you referring to? Because of Mr. Hat's new position, Trucy had to move both of those huge stage lifts. They must have been so heavy. What a riot! <laughs> That's strange. Athena, could you please add that last statement of Bonnie's testimony? All right, I'll update the Moon Matrix with the new info. Hmm, hey Apollo, now there's a new inconsistency in the testimony. Yeah, she finally slipped up. So what do I need to do now? Well, from this point onwards, you just do what you do best. Find the contradiction in the testimony and present evidence to refute it. All right, 
I've got you now, Bonnie DeThom. I guess Trucy's the one who killed Mr. Raves. Even she can move the body with that lift. I was on stage at the time, but that terrible mistake. You know what? Serves her right. <laughs> Thanks to that, she ended up having to move the stage lifts. Really? There's only five, but there's supposed to be six. I think that's the last one. In that case, we'll just have to present Trucy's own testimony to say the least. Hope I'm right. Objection! Yes, I am. That doesn't make sense. What? So you think I'm crazy now? No, that's not the point I was trying to make. But I don't hear you denying it. Mr. Fom, allow me to repeat your statement. Thanks to that, she ended up having to move the stage lifts. <laughs> that's right, and I still say that's just what she deserved. But how do you know? How do you know Miss Wright moved the stage lifts? Huh? According to her own statement, she didn't tell anyone that she had done so. What? So how could you possibly have known what she had done, unless you saw her? You saw Miss Wright moving the lifts in the understage passage, didn't you? Yeah! Which is pretty obvious. Mood matrix down to zero percent. Mood matrix complete. You did it, Apollo! Noise levels are at zero percent. Well, Mr. Justice, wouldn't that mean? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Fom herself was under the stage where the victim was killed. And I hardly need to tell the court what that means. <sighs> you are one artful liar, Mr. Fom. And one spectacular suspect. <laughs> Why, you shiny red lobster boy? You're saying I killed Mr. Rames? I'm saying that it's a possibility. What's more, I say you had a solid motive to frame my client from the murder as well. My apologies for reigning on the defense's merry revelry. But you seem to have forgotten one very important point. Oh, really? The TV footage. As you can clearly see, Mr. Fom was on the stage the whole time. The entire audience can bear witness to that fact, including you. Oh, yeah. You have just taken a long and senseless journey only to return to the starting line. The witness could not have been in the understage passage, which means the only one left who could have killed the victim is the accused. Ah! Guess the party's over. Ah! But Mr. Fom knew something she couldn't have known unless she was under the stage. How do you explain that, Prosecutor Sadmati? It's quite simple. The accused must have told Mr. Fom about it, but then forgot. Huh? Ha! Open those useless eyes of yours and take a good look at the footage. Hmm, if Mr. Fom really was in the understage passage, it would mean she was on stage and understage at the same time. You mean she was in two places at once? That does seem to be the only explanation that makes any sense. Be right back. All right, now we're back. It may be an explanation, but I'm not so sure about the make sense part. Then we'll just have to make it make sense. Your Honor, the witness was both on stage and under stage at the same time. This is the defense's assertion. Hmm, I've heard some illogical things come out of you before, but this is absurd. I'm sure you'll change your tune once you hear my reasoning, Your Honor. My gut tells me you're bluffing, but I'll bite. Very well, Mr. Justice. How do you explain how the witness was in two places at once? Well, there were two Bonnies. There were two Bonnies, Your Honor. If that were the case, it would all make sense, wouldn't it? There were... Two of them? I suspected you had a few screws loose, but now I see some are missing altogether. Is there a toolkit in this courtroom, Your Honor? 
I suppose two, no, three screws of the head should write in his putrid brain. Hmm, very well, bailiff, would you? No, wait! Please listen to my argument! Very well, I suppose it wouldn't hurt to at least give it a listen. As was argued earlier, Mr. Farm is shown in the footage the whole time. But at the same time, she was also watching Miss Wright in the understage passage. The only possible explanation is that there are two bodies. Hmm, that almost sounds like it makes sense. What do you think, Prosecutor Satmati? This humble servant of the Holy Mother is of the opinion that we should lose no time in replacing the defense's many lost screws. But Apollo, it goes against reality itself to say that one person is actually two. But we don't have to be bound by reality. After all, we're talking about magic here. So if the Bonnie that found in the footage is the real Bonnie, then the Bonnie here on the witness stand, the one who must have been understage, this Bonnie that found is our second Bonnie. Okay! She is? Say we call the one in front of us Bonnie number two. I believe I have just a piece of evidence to prove that a Miss Bonnie too exists. Oh, then please submit your evidence, Mr. Justice. What proves the existence of a Bonnie number two? The fingerprinting results. Take that! What's this? During our investigation, we found a set of unknown prints on the coffin on the stage. These prints were most likely left during the course of the show. But they didn't match the prints of any of the people involved in this case. An unknown third party's fingerprints? I was not told of this. Emma must have kept it from him. So the question is, who could these prints possibly belong to? Mr. Farm, or should I say Bonnie number two? These are your fingerprints, aren't they? Enough of this foolishness! One cursed person could not possibly be two! Those fingerprints could have been left not only during the show, but at any time! It's not like you to lose your cool like that, Prosecutor Satmari! And I'm sure you know that! Exactly when the fingerprints were, we ma were made is not the main issue! What do you mean by that, Mr. Justice? The issue is, who do these unknown prints belong to? They're certainly not buying the farms. But what if they belong to the person standing right in front of us? Oh? You mean Bonnie number two is the second Bonnie? Is that what you're implying? <sighs> it's preposterous to suggest that those prints belong to the witness. I say they must belong to some other unknown individual. Prosecutor Sadmati, can you really look at her and still say that? What are you looking at? Take a picture, it'll last longer! How could this be? If we check her prints, I'm sure they'll match the unknown set. Well, Bonnie, the prints that don't belong to the real you belong to you, don't they, Bonnie number two? Okay! Witness, is what the defense has said true? <laughs> Fine, I admit it. The fingerprints are mine. Then does that mean you aren't Bonnie DeFam? What? Ridiculous. Are there really two Bonnies? Nope, there's only one Bonnie. That's because... I'm Betty. Betty the Farm. What? Ladies and gentlemen of the court, it's time for a wondrous magic show. Gasp in amazement as this lagomorphing illusionist performs her teleportation magic. Watch closely, it's showtime.
Now that's a cute show. I love it. What an amazing trick. The witness has suddenly split into two people. It's not a trick. No gimmick to it either. We're simply twins. What? Twins? So that's how the teleportation trick works. Ever since our debut, I've had to hide or pretend I'm Bonnie. All cute and sweet and goody-goody. I can't tell you how stressful it's been. But I don't have to hide anymore. That's right. Our days of sneaking around are finally over. Their cover's blown, but they actually seem pretty happy about it. So which one of you is the nice Bonnie the fam we met in the dressing room? That would be me. And the sharp-tongued Bonnie we saw with the ratings Raj under stage was... Hey, who are you calling Shark Tom? It's all starting to make sense now. Fingerprinting results added and updated. So, Mr. Justice, this changes the facts of the case rather dramatically, doesn't it? It certainly does. During the show, it was Bonnie who was on stage the whole time. So Bonnie couldn't have committed a crime. But Betty, on the other hand, who was under stage, did have the opportunity. <sighs> well, so we now have two suspects. Hold it! Wait just a minute there, Lobster Boy. I didn't do it. That's right. Manny may, might have a foul mouth, but she'd never kill anybody. Hey, who's got a foul mouth here? Oh, uh... Well, speak up, huh? Please, save your siblings squabbling for later. Betty, you must have been in the understage passage during the show. Otherwise, you wouldn't have known about the stage lifts being moved. So what exactly were you doing down there? Fine. I'll testify. Anything to get you off my back. Prosecutor Submati, Betty the Farm is ready to testify. What do you say? Betty, you lied to this humble servant of the Holy Mother. Hey. What else could I do? I couldn't blow our cover and ruin our magic act. <laughs> Besides, am I going to go to your twilight hell or whatever for being a liar? You will indeed. However, it won't be after your death. Rather... I shall give you a taste of your punishment on this mortal coil in interrogation hell! Yay! Now then, Betty DeFarm, please explain to the court. What exactly you were doing on the stage? Here's a testimony. When this testimony, what happened under stage? It's true. I had business in the understage passage because of the upcoming trick. It was the fire trick, right? The one Mr. Reyes was supposed to do? That's right. It's a very dangerous trick, so I had to make sure we were prepared for it. It was in the script, and I really wanted to see it. But I couldn't because of the accident. Shut up! You're gonna give it away! Anyway, I was real busy. Yeah, way too busy to have the chance to kill Mr. Reyes. Well, that was certainly different. <laughs> How's that for a flawless testimony and alibi? Our magic is real. It's not a trick or a gimmick. Oh my, she's floating. Um, your honor. You can see she's being held up from below. You were supposed to pretend you didn't see that. It's a little something called etiquette. But, I can't help it. Whenever I see a contradiction or inconsistency, I just have to point it out. I'll be right back, again. Let us continue. Sorry about this. Family can be a can be, well, trivial. Now then, the defense may begin its cross-examination. I only hope I don't get any more interruptions than that. It's true. I had business in the understage passage because of the upcoming trick. It was the fire trick, right? The one Mr. Reyes was supposed to do? That's right. It's a very dangerous trick. 
so I had to make sure we were prepared for it. Is that so? Well, I'm about to prove you wrong today. Objection! I hate to break this to you, Betty, but there's a big flaw in your testimony. As big as the one in that floating trick you did earlier. Ooh, harsh words. Well, let me tell you something, forehead boy. No one has ever figured out how we do our teleportation trick. No one except me, you mean? Well, we have even better tricks up our sleeves. Huh? We do? I told you to keep it zipped! Now, now, don't fight, you two, Mr. Justice. What's this about a flaw in the testimony? The script has this to say about the fire trick. This will be dangerous. Make sure the fire bucket is ready. However, we found the fire bucket lying empty backstage except for a layer of dust. Ah! I... I... Ouch! You didn't even attempt to get ready for the next trick, did you, Betty? You got me! Betty DeFam, you will explain yourself! There's nothing to explain! Come on, Daddy, we can't hide it any longer! We might as well tell them! Shut up! You can barely take care of yourself! Don't try and tell me what to do! Well, if neither of you will explain, I guess I'll have to! The reason Betty didn't prepare for the fire trick is because she knew the show wouldn't go on! You didn't prepare for the fire trick because you knew, didn't you? You knew that the body would be found and that the show would then be cancelled! Don't be ridiculous, you insignificant speck of a man! I'm gonna yank those lame bangs off yours off. Is that what you want, I'm huh? Touching. Whatever, they can grow back. Now stop stalling and just tell us the truth already. I can't reveal my secrets, I'm a magician! You have been chasing the shadow of an illusory corporate defense. And having chanced upon a convenient target, you have let yourself get carried away. Exactly! Where's your proof, huh? And yet, I can see that the witness's taste for false words has also been proven. I advise you to confine your deceitful trickery to your magic act, witness! Deceitful trickery! As your court appointed therapist, I'd like to add something here, Betty. You finally let yourself be who you really are. But if you continue to hide behind lies, you'll just be imprisoning your heart all over again. <laughs> but all these questions mean you're trying to put me in prison for real. So I'll be behind bars either way. Does that mean you're admitting your guilt? Of course not! I can't believe you people. Every one of you thinks I did something I didn't do. You... Lobster boy! Cue walk geezer! Headcase brat! Service monk! That's a lot of insults right there. Cue ball geezer? Headcase brat? Really? Bet! Calm down! Come on now! Deep breaths! Deep breaths! Look, I'm not the murderer, I tell you. Then how did you know the show would be called off before the fire trick? I... I told you. We can't reveal our secrets. We're under contract. Contract? What is she talking about? Be that as it may, you're obviously a suspect in this okay. case. I'm beginning to see the karmic threads that make up the intricate tapestry that is this case. Huh? Allow me to summarize your assertions, Defense. First, that the victim was killed in the understage passage. And second, that the witness and the accused are the only two who could have done it. Exactly. What's more, Betty knew that the body would be found, and that the magic show would then be called off. Therefore, it's reasonable to conclude that Betty killed the victim under stage. But what if Betty knew that the show would be called off for some other reason? Like what? 
in the course of my investigation. I found it strange that the dragon set piece fell when it did. That in conjunction with the body tumbling from the coffin in such a dramatic fashion, all seemed too perfect for mere happenstance. It was as though the entire chain of events had been planned out in advance. <laughs> Ouch! Planned out? After deciding to take this case, I scrupulously studied everything I could about the mass media in this country. I read the newspaper, old news reports, I even browsed tabloid magazines. How very industrious of you, I'm impressed! During this process, I learned about a strange practice favored by the TV world. A practice called the Hidden Camera Prank. Ah! Betty and Bonnie, you knew about this, did you not? About the dead body appearing, the set piece falling, the show being suspended, you two were informed of this plan. By Take Two TV in advance, correct? Is that true? Betty, please, let's tell them now I can't hold them in anymore. Ugh. Dang it. Fine, you got us. Everything the prosecutor said is true. The TV station paid us to cooperate with them on this plan. It was all a prank, a big setup planned out in advance. Mr. Ray was showing up dead in the coffin. The set piece falling down. It was all completely scripted. All the scripted? It was all... A prank? Bonnie, is this really true? Yes. Mr. Reyes was supposed to pretend to be dead. That's how it was supposed to go. So he was in on it too? That's right. He was supposed to show up dead in the coffin. And then the set piece would fall down. Juicy would be shocked and start to panic. That's how the prank script went. What? What the heck kind of prank is that? But we never thought he'd actually wind up dead. Yeah, that was the only thing that was different from the script. Poor Mr. Reyes. I'm so completely lost right now. Well, Betty and Bonnie, it certainly sounds like you have some explaining to do. All right, all right. I guess desperate times call for desperate measures. <laughs> Just this once, we'll share how it was done with you. So listen carefully. You'll never hear this kind of thing anywhere else. After our teleportation trick, I went down under stage. When Mr. Reyes' body appeared from the coffin on stage, it was time for Bay to do her job in the understage passage. That's right. I used a remote control for the winch connected to the dragon set piece and made it fall down. And just before the dragon fell, I called Trucy to the backstage so she wouldn't get hurt. After that, the plan was for Mr. Reyes to come back in life in front of a panicked Trucy. He was supposed to laugh and fly up and away. That was how it was scripted anyway. But for some reason, he really did turn up dead, so he kind of just stayed on the ground. What kind of sick joke is that? It sounds like a terribly mean-spirited prank to me. The poor defendant was trying to do her magic show. I guess so. I'm sorry, Trucy. <laughs> Whatever. It was all the ratings Raja idea anyway. Yeah. It sounds like just the kind of thing a guy like him would come up with. Um, this is the prank plan script we got from the ratings Raja. We got that added in the court record. Dang it! You made us break our contract! Now we won't get paid! Hmm. Where does this all leave us? Who killed the victim? And when? Yes, exactly. Those are the key questions. If Mr. Reyes was only pretending to be dead in the coffin as a part of the prank, then when he was under stage, there would still be life within him. And if that is the case... Then Betty, who is also on the stage, may be excluded from our list of suspects. Ah! 
Witness, was the victim alive up until he entered the coffin? Oh, well, now that we've spilled the beans, we might as well show you this video. Greetings, viewers. It is I, the great Mr. Raves. We're currently in the middle of Truce's escape trick. Having snuck through the understage passage undetected, I am now hiding backstage, preparing to play a little prank on Trucy. I'm about to hide in the coffin, which Trucy will stab with a rubber sword. And when the coffin opens, oh, I'll be in it acting as though I've met my maker. Can you imagine the look on Trucy's face then? Oh, I can hardly wait. He's about to hide in the coffin? It would seem the threads of karmic destiny have led us to the truth. The victim passed through the understage where Bay de Farm was and came up in the backstage area. We know this because Mr. Reyes appeared to be backstage when he shot the video we saw. It appears that way, yes. And defense, you proposed the following, did you not? What if the victim was killed under the stage before being put into the coffin? But then what about this video? This footage was taken just before Mr. Ray was sent the coffin. <sighs> oh, so does that mean... <laughs> yes, it is horrible but true. The tragedy did indeed play out right there on the stage. When into the coffin where Mr. Reyes was hiding, Trucy Wright thrust her blade. Uh. Ah! <laughs> See? Told you so. So are you saying the incident was a tragic accident that happened during a prank? It would be an accident if the accused had no knowledge of the prank beforehand. So let us ask the accused herself. Miss Wright, did you have prior knowledge of the prank? What? I... I... Tell him, Trucy. You didn't know anything about it, right? Of course I did it. I didn't know a single thing about it. Still think you can play innocent, do you? In that case, you leave me little choice but to present this piece of evidence. It looks like some sort of note. Ah! That's... I found this note in the dressing room after the incident. At the time, I did not understand what it meant, but it's all clear to me now. What's this? Let's see. It says, get the video camera after Mr. Reus comes tumbling out. It is a note signed by the accused instructing Bonnie to collect Mr. Reyes' video camera from him, it seems. I don't get it. It doesn't make any sense. I found it in the dressing room before the show. When I saw it, I realized that Trucy knew about the prank. It does bear her signature. I'll give you that much. So over defending that prior knowledge of the prank, it would appear so. Yes. When she learned about the prank that planned the tricker, she decided to use it to her own advantage. So she thrust the steel sword in the coffin where the victim stood chuckling to himself. Is that not what happened, Miss Wright? Of course not! And I didn't write or sign that note! Ah, but the handwriting matches yours. All of the evidence and testimony points to you being the culprit. But I didn't do it! It wasn't me! Then explain the existence of this note. You can do that, can you not? I... I can't explain it. I didn't write it, so I don't understand. I didn't kill Mr. Reus. You have to believe me. The 
the silence is deafening. Continue struggling against the threads of your own karma if you wish, accused. Even as you are inescapably caught in the web of fate you've spun for yourself. Miss Wright, it is time to resign yourself to your fate. No! I didn't do it! I... Ha! I knew it! That sweet-looking girl? A murderer? She took all of us in with that act of hers. I told you, I knew she was a homicidal little witch from the start. But I didn't do it! I really didn't! Why doesn't anybody believe me? Shut up, you killer! We won't fall for that anymore! This is bad! Your Honor, I suggest we put an end to this tragedy now. Give your official ruling and let us offer the victim's soul the last right it deserves. Very well. I suppose I have no other choice. This court hereby finds the defendant true C right. The defense has an objection. Apollo! You! Even now you would... I won't give up, and I refuse to let either of them down. Mr. Wright who's counting on me, and Trucy who's put all of her faith in me! Mr. Justice, the fact that you have raised an objection means that you have evidence with which to refute the prosecution's claims, correct? Yes, of course, Your Honor. Do we really have anything, Apollo? Actually, we do. There's one piece of evidence we can present here. Very well, Mr. Justice, you may proceed. As we saw in the show footage, there's no question that the defendant thrust the sword into the coffin. The defense doesn't dispute this point. But let us not forget that this was a magic show filled with tricks and illusions. We can't take everything we see at face value. You're saying some sleight of hand was somehow involved. Yes, the defense contends that the sword the defendant used was not the cause of death. Now what was it Trucy told me she did just before she thrust the sword into the coffin? Very well. Let us see your evidence then, Mr. Justice. But remember, you interrupted my verdict to make this claim. You will be severely penalized if I find you are bluffing. <clears throat> That's fine, Your Honor. This shows that it's possible that the sword Miss Wright used was not the cause of death. The sword stand. Take that! What's this? A sword from the show? That's right, Your Honor. This rubber sword was in the sword stand under stage. During the trick, Miss Wright was supposed to swap the real sword for a rubber sword. And she told us on record that she remembers very clearly that she did. I see. So the sword the defendant thrust into the coffin was a rubber sword, was it? But then why was a steel sword found lying on the stage? Somebody must have put the steel sword there by swapping it with the rubber one. Just after the incident occurred, the dragon set piece fell and the theater was evacuated. The real culprit must have used the resulting chaos to swap the rubber sword for the steel one. Do you not know when to give up, stick bug? That is not possible. Blood was found in the coffin hole that the sword was thrust into. It must have been left there when the accused withdrew the sword. This is incontrovertible proof that the sword she used was a steel Objection. one. But that blood could be the result of someone tampering with the crime scene after the fact. After the set piece fell and the audience was cleared out of the theater. There was plenty of time for somebody to plant that blood down. If the sword the accused used was a rubber one, then when exactly do you propose the victim was killed, given that Mr. Reyes was alive when he entered that Objection. coffin? Finding the answer to that question is precisely why we need to continue this trial. Let me express my opinion. 
By all accounts, it is certainly reasonable to suspect the defendant based on the evidence. But as to the question of whether the saw the defendant used was rubber or steel, I believe further discussion is warranted. I suggest we hear from the defendant herself on this issue. Very well, Your Honor. Yes! I saved it! Somehow, too close for comfort, but still. Good. Let's adjourn for a brief 15-minute recess. I advise the prosecution and the defense to use this time to prepare. And this is where we're gonna cut it here for now. Yeah, I'm sorry, but these trials get ridiculously long. And the next bit ain't gonna be any better either. So that's it. If you enjoyed this, please be sure to hit the like button, it means a lot. Please don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and click the bell. I will see you when we hopefully finish it. This is Mega Man Engineer signing off. Peace out. Product provided by Capcom. My voice is gonna have a major workout.